The mission of Natera is to transform the management of disease. So it's very broad and the way we will do that is currently through advanced diagnostics, giving people the most extensive and thorough and accurate information and moving from the diagnostics into the predictive realm where we can be doing whole genome analysis combined with AI to predict people's susceptibility to disease and transform preventative healthcare as well. So we've started focusing on people who have transplants and at a crucial time of their life like pregnancy or people who have cancer or people who have severe genetic conditions that covers about 10 to 15 percent of the population we are going to move into a hundred percent of the population over time with initiatives that you know we feel can save the healthcare system more than 200 billion dollars a year i was a professor of aeronautics and astronautics a consulting professor at stanford when my sister gave birth about 20 years ago to a child with down syndrome and they didn't know until the child was born that he was affected and the child died after six days and i couldn't believe that we had all of this incredible technology in our cell phones and our laptops and our spaceships all the signal processing capability and computational power and it hadn't found its way into the world of diagnostics so that in the 21st century a kid could be born with Down syndrome and all the screening tests didn't pick that up. And I started to work on a bunch of projects where we could look at you know, models of clinical data and genetic data and improve clinical decision making and detect things that otherwise wouldn't be detectable. A few years after what happened to my sister, I was going to have a little girl and uh, we found out late in the pregnancy uh, that the child had a genetic condition and it was totally separate from what happened to my sister. It absolutely broke me. I mean, it was the most horrific medieval experience. I think the engineer in me just took over. I thought I just have to solve this problem. We used the data from that pregnancy to submit to the NIH to have them fund us to build a prenatal test that would be offered earlier and catch all sorts of conditions with much higher reliability and much broader coverage than the existing screening tests. What we realized was that this technology could be applied to oncology. We built a bespoke assay that's custom built for a specific tumor. And as a result, this test called Signatera was able to detect minimal residual disease, characterize the tumor, and be able to assess response to therapy for malignancies. We realized that this technology could be used in organ health or organ transplant. The existing blood tests that we have had available are not very good to detect rejection. So we came up with a much better test that we call Prospera. And Prospera actually looks for DNA from the donated organ. And when we see the DNA from the donated organ spilling into the patient's bloodstream, that can indicate rejection. A paper that we published a couple years ago shows that it actually can go up five months before rejection is clinically apparent. So it gives your doctor much more time to treat your rejection. The ability to detect rejection earlier and in cases where it had not been previously suspected has really been transformative. So doctors have told me of many cases of patients who they thought were doing just fine and they ran the Prospera test and discovered that this patient was having rejection and that had not been evident using the traditional lab tests or any other signs. Patients felt fine. Everything looked good to them. This particular test has now been validated to predict acute rejection, both acute cellular rejection as well as antibody-mediated rejection in kidney transplant as well as heart and lung transplant and soon to come Prospera liver transplant. We're really at the cusp of, of discovery uh, when it relates to the intersection of cancer or oncology and and transplantation uh, right now. Cancer is a, uh, a major obstacle for patients uh, being referred for transplant, uh, but also after transplant. Patients who receive immunosuppression for 
being allowed to accept the graft are also at significant risk for, for a multitude of, of cancer types, uh, such as post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder or PTLD. So having better molecular tools to surveil the, the transplant patient in order to pick up the incipient earliest signs of a cancer in order to not only know uh, what type of cancer, but to allow for um, mitigation in the risk of cancer potentially by adjusting the immunosuppression or by starting preemptive therapy for different types of cancer, you know, may be a, a very powerful tool to implement into the transplant space. Our R&D team is working on epigenetic mechanisms including methylation and, as well as microRNA to be able to better understand the tissue of origin for rejection in multi-organ transplants, as well as to understand and differentiate between the different types of injury and the different types of rejection, including antibody-mediated rejection, as well as T-cell-mediated rejection. The main clinical challenge in transplants still remains the need for all these immune suppressant medications. So what Natera is doing is we're looking at the ability of the Prospera test to allow patients to be on less immune suppression. And we're actually planning a large clinical trial which will start enrolling at the end of this year in which patients whose Prospera tests are consistently low will have their medications reduced. And this hopefully will lead to a generally less use of these medications for many patients. I can tell you that it's just incredibly satisfying to have such profound performance. And it's, it's also invigorating to keep working on that performance because there's a long way that we can still go in transplant. And every improvement that we make in transplant has direct significant impact in the quality of people's lives.